Good morning, champions. Today is Friday, April 3rd, 2020. Today is a geology lesson covering Chapter 8, Earth's Mighty Mountains. Our objective for today is scholars will know how movement of forces of tectonic plates build mountains. So tectonic plates, those large uh, continental or oceanic pieces of crust that slide into each other. How do they make mountain ranges in our world, okay? For this activity, you have this activity page. It says 12.2 up top, labeled Friday, April 3rd, Earth's Mighty Mountains, okay? So it's just one page, front and back. On the front side of this page, you must answer each question thoughtfully citing the page number where we found the evidence for each question, answering complete sentences, and restate the question in your answer whenever possible. Okay, so I know these boxes, they're a little limited. If you are answering in the boxes, that is perfectly fine. You may not fill in complete sentences if you write a little big. Um, however, there will be a Google form attached to this in which you can also uh, type in your answers for these questions. So we have a grid system here for three types of mountains that we'll be covering in chapter eight. We have fold mountains, fault block mountains, and dome mountains. So three types of mountains. And for each of these mountains, we are answering three questions. Question one, how are they formed? Question two, what are common features or characteristics of these mountains? And what are some examples and where are they located? So the front side of this page has nine spots for us to write a short sentence of how full mountains are formed, how fault block mountains are formed, and how dome mountains are formed, okay? On the back side, we have a map of the world with some famous mountain ranges. And either using the text or going online to determine their locations, there are seven mountain ranges that we need to identify where they can be found. We have the Himalayas, the Harz Mountains, the Black Hills, the Andes Mountains, the Grand Tetons, Navajo Mountain, Basin and Range Province, okay? So seven different mountain ranges that we need to identify here on the map, whether they are in North America, South America, over in Asia, or in Europe, where do we found, find these mountains, okay? So that's what our end of mind looks like on the 12.2 activity page. And just like I've been doing with previous geology lessons, and you can read along if you did get one of our books at the pass out, is we are going to be reading chapter eight, Earth's Mighty Mountains. This starts on page 72 of your reader, okay? So read along with me. Our big question looks a lot like our objective. How do the movements and forces of tectonic plates build mountains? Chapter eight. Earth's Mighty Mountains. The year was 1953. Mountain climbers Edmund Hillary and Tenzing Norgay stood on the hard packed snow. They gasped for a breath in the thin air. Their faces burned from the bitter cold wind. Despite this, they were grinning from ear to ear. Hillary and Norgay had just made it to the top of Mount Everest. They were the first people to reach Earth's highest point, 29,029 feet above sea level. Mountains are some of Earth's most awe-inspiring features. In 1953, geologists were still searching for answers as to how mountains form. By the 1960s, scientific evidence pointed to plate tectonics as a driving force behind mountain building. As we read back in chapter two, our planet's rocky exterior isn't one solid piece. It is broken up into a collection of gigantic tectonic plates. Earth's tectonic plates move slowly, but their movements have dramatically changed Earth's features over time. 
plate movements have shuffled Earth's continents into different positions. They have destroyed old oceans and created new ones. They have also built mountains and mountain ranges in several different ways. Page 74, Colliding Continents. Some of Earth's highest mountain ranges formed as sections of continental crust collided over millions of years. The collision that formed Mount Everest is a good example. Everest is a part of the Himalayas, a vast towering mountain range between India and China. The Himalayas formed when continents on two tectonic plates met head on. So if we look over here at the map, we have Africa, the Middle East, Europe, and Asia, with this landmass down here being India. So when we're looking for Mount Everest, it is part of the Himalayas, and we can put that in the mountain range located near India. Can you find India on the map? Just point it out here. It lies along the southern edge of Asia. India wasn't always where it is today. Hundreds of millions of years ago, India was an island. It sat out in the middle of the Indo-Australian plate. It was separated from Asia, which sits on the Eurasian plate, by an ancient ocean called the Tethys Sea. The Indo-Australian plate began creeping northward about 200 million years ago. Driven by moving magma in the mantle below, it slowly collided with the Eurasian plate. Where the two plates met, subduction took place. The heavier oceanic crust of the Indo-Australian plate slid under the lighter continental crust of the Eurasian plate. As the Indo-Australian plate kept moving northward, India was carried along. It inched closer and closer to Asia. The Tethys Sea began to disappear. India finally collided with Asia around 40 million years ago. India's, rock, India's rocky continental crust pressed directly against Asia's continental crust. As the two land masses continued to be pushed harder and harder together, the continental crust began to crumble. Enormous pressure created by the moving tectonic plate caused the rocky crust to heave upward. Great masses of rock gradually rose up into a series of enormous folds. The Himalayas were born. More and more rocks were uplifted as the Indo-Australian plate kept moving. The Himalayas rose higher and higher. In fact, they are still rising. They are growing taller at about the same rate that your fingernails grow. Geologists classify the Himalayas as fold mountains. The name refers to the way rocks are pushed up into huge folds by moving tectonic plates. The Alps, Europe's highest mountains, are fold mountains that formed much like the Himalayas. The Appalachians in North America and the Urals in Russia also formed through collisions of continental crust. So think back to page 74 and 75. When it talks about Everest, the Himalayas, the Appalachians, and um, other mountain ranges, you're talking about a fold. You have two continental crusts crashing into each other and it folds upwards to make these mountains. So when you're answering your questions on your page, think about how those fold mountains are formed, what are common features or characteristics of them, and what are some examples and where are they located, okay? So like many other fold mountains, the Himalayas contain quite a bit of sedimentary rock. Why? In the case of the Himalayas, it started with the Tethya Sea. For millions of years, erosion washed sediments from Asia and the ancient island of India into the Tethya Sea. Countless layers of sediments along with remains of ocean animals were deposited on the sea floor. Over time, pressure and heat helped turn these sediments into sedimentary rock. As plate movements slowly brought India and Asia together, some of these seafloor sedimentary rocks were pushed up. Heat and pressure from co the colliding plates transformed some of them into metamorphic rocks. 
other sedimentary rocks remained relatively unchanged. This is how fossils of ancient ocean animals ended up on the top of Mount Everest. Fossils at the top of the world. Trilobites and crinoids are two of the most common types of fossils on Mount Everest. Trilobites were hard-shelled ocean animals related to modern-day crabs and lobsters. Trilobites lived on the bottom of Earth's ancient oceans, including the Tethia Sea. Crinoids were animals too, but they looked more like plants. Trilobites and most crinoids became extinct about 250 million years ago. A few types of crinoids still survive far below the ocean surface. Okay. Page 77, folding at the edges. Along South America's western coast, the oceanic Nazca Plate has been sliding under the South American Plate for millions of years. This has caused massive folds of rock to pile up along the edge of the continent. These folds are now the Andes Mountains, the longest mountain range on land. So when you look at the uh, map on the back of your page, Andes Mountains are the longest mountain range so it should have the most black triangles, and it's located in South America. As you read in chapter four, the edge of a subducting plate melts as it descends into Earth's hot mantle. The resulting magma moves up through cracks in the crust. It may erupt on the surface to form volcanoes. The edge of the Nazca plate is melting as it slides beneath the South American plate. Erupting magma has created many volcanoes in the Andes mountain ranges. All right, page 78, faults and blocks. The longest, highest mountain ranges on land are mostly fold mountains. However, moving tectonic plates build mountains in other ways as well. Fault block mountains, our second type of mountains on your paper, form when gigantic blocks of rock move up and down along faults. At some faults, such as the San Andreas Fault in California, blocks of rock move horizontally past each other as they slip. At other faults, slips cause blocks of rock on one side of the fault to move up. These slips also cause blocks on the other side of the fault to move down. Repeated slips gradually force these rocks rock blocks higher and lower to create fault block mountain ranges. Fault block mountains typically have one steep side and one sloping side. The steep side forms a high sheer cliff. Germany's Haars Mountains, these are on your map on the back, so this is Germany and Europe, are one example of fault block mountains. Others include the Grand Tetons in Wyoming, and the Basin and Range province of Utah, Nevada, and Arizona. So if you look at your map, if you can find where Utah, Nevada, and Arizona are, we have uh, the Basin and Range province. So example fault blocks, you have two, two tectonic plates, and they slide past each other. And as they slide, they push up a rock or push rock down. So you get a very steep side and a sloping side to our mountains. That's our second type of mountains, okay? For example, here in the picture of the Grand Tetons, we have very steep side, and on the back side of this mountain, it would kind of slope down and you'd have kind of a good skiing area, okay? On to page 80. Most people think of sharp, jagged peaks when they hear the word mountains. Dome mountains are quite different. Dome mountains look like great humps of rock with rounded tops. They usually occur as isolated mountains on otherwise flat plains. Some dome mountains form when magma pushes upward into Earth's crust from the mantle. The magma cools into igneous rock before reaching the surface. This huge lump of igneous rock causes the crust above it to bulge, like a blister on skin. Utah's Navajo Mountain 
is a good example of a dough mountain that formed this way. So dough mountains are usually one mountain, not a whole range of mountains, and it's usually magma bubbling up and hardening to form a round dome, okay? Mountains on the Prairie, page 81. You can see the Black Hills of Western South Dakota from a long way off. These dome mountains rise up from the surrounding grassy plains as dark hunched shapes. They are the highest mountains east of the Rocky Mountains. Very ancient granite forms the core of the Black Hills. Millions of years of weathering and erosion have exposed the igneous rock in many places. The sculptor, Gutsan Borglum, made one tall granite formation in the Black Hills famous. He carved the faces of four presidents into the rock to create Mount Rushmore National Memorial. Another sculptor in the Black Hills has also gained attention as the world's largest sculpture in progress. Crazy Horse Memorial honors North American Indian heritage and depicts the face of Sioux leader Crazy Horse, started in 1948 by sculptor Korzak Zilkowski. Work on the mask of sculptors still continues today, over 70 years later. Okay. So that wraps it up for chapter eight, Earth's Mighty Mountains. Remember our objective today was we will know how movement and forces of tectonic plates build our mountains. Your worksheet today and what you'll see in the Google form is you'll have three types of mountains, our fold mountains, our fault block mountains, our dome mountains, and you're answering how are they formed, what are common features or characteristics, what are some examples and where are they located? And then on the back, using this map and these nine, or seven, I should say, seven mountains filling in the blanks of where we think all these mountains are. Okay, so thank you for your tuning in today. We'll follow up on Monday with another science lesson. Thank you for tuning in uh, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.